Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we are going to learn how to bend tubes the right way. How I do it is not necessarily the way that everyone else does it. However, I am going to show you exactly how I end up with that perfect tube bend for our water cooling loop. So I hope you all enjoy. So for our first test, we have a piece of PETG tubing right here. The same process applies to acrylic tubing as well. Exactly the same method. It all works very similar. It's a very similar process behind the two methods. So we have our heat gun right here. Of course, a lot of you guys would know that we do use a heat gun for water cooling, uh, for bending the tubings and everything like that. So. With our PETG tubing, I'm going to show you guys what a few beginners might do and they might forget the silicon insert. So we're going to show you guys what actually happens when we bend it without the silicon insert, when we bend it and overheat it, and when we underheat it as well. And then we'll show you guys how to achieve that perfect bend in the end. So we'll start with the tube method without the silicon insert. So I'm just going to turn my heat gun onto high heat and we will see what happens. Okay, so the tube is at melting point right now and as you can see, when we get this bend in, you can see that it kinks on the edge, which is why a lot of people get deformities when they're trying to bend their tubes because you absolutely need that silicon insert on the inside, otherwise this happens. When using a silicon insert with the tube itself, a lot of people actually forget to try and lubricate the silicon insert so that you can pull it out of the tube. A lot of people do a lot of awesome bends and they've got the perfect tube bends. However, it becomes impossible to pull the silicon insert out because there is no lubrication. So what we are going to do is just use some regular hand soap and that'll allow us to put the tube in all the way through and will also give us lubrication to actually pull the tube out after we have achieved our bend. So you guys can see that we have our soap inside. That'll make it easier to actually push the silicon insert in. I firstly want to show you guys what actually happens when we overheat this tube. Now these are the signs that you have to look for and what you're about to see will give you an indication of whether you are keeping that tube over the heat gun for too long or not. So let's give it a try. So I don't know if you guys can see well or not, but what happens is the tube actually starts forming these little bubbles on the inside. Now these bubbles, they pop up because there is heat trying to escape between the tube and the silicon, so they're becoming bubbles underneath the tube itself. So overheating it, you can expect to see lots of little bubbles. This does happen with acrylic as well. So what actually happens to a tube if we underheat it by accident? Let's find out. So this is what normally would happen if you underheat the tube. Now this of course is very over exaggerated. Normally you might get say one in the middle or two small ones, but normally not this bad as long as you guys heat it up enough. And I'm sure you guys will kind of understand how long to put it on for, but just in case it is a tad earlier, this is the type of thing that can happen. Also what can tend to happen is you might say heat the middle up enough and it is ready to bend however the two sides because they aren't hot enough yet they tend to sort of make a flat spot in the middle where it bends in the middle but it can't bend on the sides yet because it's not hot enough so you might end up with a flat spot on the top here and that's kind of what happened on the bottom side here the middle was ready to bend so it created the bend however at this point and this point it was too cool for the PETG to actually bend so it just bunched up in these two sections here so that's pretty much what happens when you attempt to bend a tube that is not ready to be bent I've now shown you guys the two scenarios when you underheat and when you overheat a tube when it comes to bending them. Now this applies for both PETG and acrylic. 
The last bend, however, I need to slow it down a bit for you guys because I really want you guys to understand how this works. So with the first bend, we overheated it. Now I can start to see the tube bending under its own weight. That's how you know that the tube is almost ready to go. And basically once it starts to do that, I let it sag by itself. Once I start seeing it sag, I'll give it a couple seconds more and then it's done. In the first one, we went for a bit longer to demonstrate how to overheat it. Now with the underheating process, I told you guys that where it bunched up there, there was too much heat concentrated in the center and not enough to the edges. The edges were still too cold to be able to perform that perfect bend, which is why we saw the bunched up sections. So what we wanna concentrate on in this bend is we want to spread the heat out over about a one to two inch distance and we wanna keep it rotating to keep the heat even around the whole tube because you need the tube to bend on the outside and on the inside. So let's go ahead, let's do that and we'll show you guys a perfect bend. And guys, while I'm doing it, do concentrate on when the tube starts to sag. You'll notice that I'll only leave it on for a couple seconds more. So as you guys can see here, we achieved the perfect 90 degree bend without actually putting any bubbles or any stress on the tube itself. It was perfectly heated, which means there was a nice even curve around the whole tube. Now, one thing I must stress to you guys as well, a lot of people will go ahead and dunk their tube into water or something to cool it down straight away after heating it. This is a very bad idea, more so with acrylic because PETG is a softer material, so it's a little more forgiving. But with acrylic, it is very easy to actually cause stress fractures in the acrylic tube itself, especially when you're all of a sudden cooling down something that is so hot. So when your car breaks down from an overheating radiator or things like that, you don't go ahead and pour water on it because you can cause stress cracks in that. If you go ahead and put a boiling glass of water in the freezer and you let it freeze overnight, you'll notice that the glass has most likely cracked. Same thing applies here. You don't want to put it underwater. It is too much stress on the acrylic tube in a very fast amount of time. Just so just let the tube air cool, hold it in the place that you wish to achieve and and you should have no worries there. Anyway guys, I hope this does help someone else out there. This was a bit of a fun experiment. Hopefully I have taught you guys a thing or two about how to bend tubing for your first water-cooled system. Obviously there are other ways, other methods of doing it. I found that this works best for me, especially when you're distributing the heat evenly across the tube and letting it bend under its own weight. That means that the whole circumference of the tube has melted and there's no parts that have not melt yet because it is bending under its own weight. If there were parts that were too cool to actually bend yet, it wouldn't start sagging. So by leaving it for a few seconds more, we're making sure that it has melted the circumference of the tube itself and then it is ready for the perfect bend. Anyway guys, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I'll try and leave some different varieties of tubes in the description if you guys are interested in what type of varieties you can get for water cooling. And guys, if you did enjoy this video, consider subscribing, like the video, leave a comment down below. What other water cooling tutorials do you wanna see? And check out more videos, guys. We got lots of custom PCs, reviews, modding tutorials, water cooling guides, and more. And if you want to help support us, guys, we do have a Patreon. $1 a month is perfect. Thank you very much for all of those who are supporting us at the moment as well. It is much appreciated. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.